Hey folks, Steve here, and um, yesterday I announced um, that Hammer's coming back. Uh, for, for those of you that don't know what uh, Hammer is, Hammer for Mac, um, originally launched back in around 2013-14. Um, I took it over full-time from a team of people that built it uh, in 2015, and we had a, a good run of a few years, uh, lots of updates and improvements to Hammer, and then it died. Uh, large, I won't go into it. That's a, <laughs> another uh, another video. Uh, but basically, the summary is it became too difficult to maintain uh, to keep up with Apple's um, changes in their system, Ruby, and and with macOS updates, with everything else that was going on, it just became um, too much to update. And eventually, it it died. And I actually officially announced it dead just a few months ago in fact although i've been dead for a long time just getting around to it anyway all of that to say i was as surprised as anyone and you know there's a lot of people that really loved hammer hammer was uh, an acclaimed app an award-winning app um it was much loved by its users so understandably and i was one of them which is why i, I took it on um because i didn't want to see it disappear and i i really loved using it and frankly i've missed using it and that's largely the point of why I decided over this Christmas period to roll up my sleeves and dive right in and um, kind of explore what a hammer in 2025 might look like. Uh, the technology has changed. So original hammer was built in Objective-C or Mac OS. Um, the actual compilation engine, so that took the site files and compiled them to an output was done with a Ruby gem. That Ruby gem was was bundled as a gem and included in the in the app uh, uh, binary, but was also pulled from a remote source so we could update the gem remotely. Uh, that that in itself was was quite useful, it must be said. But that whole relationship between the native part and the and the Ruby engine was problematic from a from a technical debt and a maintenance perspective. So. Uh, I sat down this Christmas, I fired up Xcode, I hit file new project, um, and now we're dealing with Swift. We've got Swift UI instead of all of the zibs and nibs, and uh, that was even pre-storyboards in, you know, in Xcode, uh, so Swift and Swift UI. And I did explore originally reintegrating the hammer gem, because it's still quite relevant. Um, and in doing so, decided to explore what it would be like to have a fully native app. One core language, core set of technologies and as close to the hardware as possible and with, you know, with the Swift language and Xcode and the whole Apple ecosystem. And that was a rabbit hole that I went down over this Christmas period and I was actually thrilled with the result. So thrilled that I put out an announcement yesterday that I think Hammer is coming back it is coming back one way or another even if i'm the only person that ends up using it because like i said i've just missed hammer for the use cases that hammer is good at what is that well in the last 10 years the front end development ecosystem has just been wild and i love it i'm here for it um from the early days of hammer which was designed to solve a simple problem of working with html css and javascript uh which are really you know doesn't matter what anyone says, that's how the web works, those those three core languages. Everything else are layers upon layers of generating HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, so this is about working with those technologies directly, but making up for some of their shortcomings. So for example, just being able to split my HTML code into little chunks so they're easier to read, easier to manage, easier to update, easier to have one chunk and use it in many places rather than repeating a lot of code, we had hammer include tags. Um, being able to um, add files like my JavaScript files or, or my uh, CSS files and link them, um, you'd have to, in your HTML code, write a, a long line, relatively long line of text that pointed to that file. What happens if you move that file? You have to crawl through and update all of those um, those those tags. So the Hammer Hammer Smart uh, Pass and um, JavaScript and CSS link tags uh, made it easy where you could just write a tag, tell it the name of the file. It doesn't matter where that file is in the project. 
it will hammer will find it when it builds and insert the the correct link tag same with images uh, and we'll go on and we'll we'll discover a lot of el a lot of the other things that hammer um, was originally designed to do and I think having gone on a 10-year journey in front-end development through the emergence of you know um, angular and react and Vue and everything else and then bundlers like webpack and Vite and all of the rest um, and they're all powerful and they're all wonderful and I all I use them all every single day there are still many many use cases where I just want to author some HTML some CSS and some JavaScript in a very fun and hum human like way and that's where hammer really excels now I actually started rebuilding hammer um, a couple of times over the last 10 years. Uh, one in particular, one big effort, and you'll see uh, writing that I've done on this, where we actually went the other direction from where we're going with this hammer. It was about um, a warts and all approach to hammer. So we started adding in features. We wanted to make it cross-platform so that it worked not just on Mac. Hammer for Mac was a native Mac app, but it didn't work on Windows, uh, for example. So we took the we took a different route, a different architecture. So we had a Node-based engine, a Node.js-based engine um, that had a React front end that was distributed as an Electron app. And there were some benefits to that, you know, cross-platform uh, compatibility being one, uh, Node.js ecosystem, um, being able to hook more directly into things like Webpack and, and Beat and some of the, a lot of these other front end tools that, that are more uh, been designed specifically for the Node ecosystem were a little easier to integrate. We also started introducing additional features like a, um, a Git GUI. So, um, you know, one of the real reasons people use Hammer is for the, for the fresh native Mac, simple, beautiful, uh, graphical user interface rather than a command line tool that you get in other static site generators like middleman or um, etc so um, so but you know git has become a mainstay for you know and a go-to for version control so we thought about adding a git GUI uh, into hammer so people could use hammer and use the git GUI uh, part of hammer to, to have some rudimentary Git uh, controls. Didn't support everything, but did enough for you to be able to add, commit, push, um, pull, rebase, etc., to a remote Git repository. And um, what I felt we never actually launched it was that we did the typical thing of just adding more, more features and never really completed any of them. Uh, to the point that we were happy with it and we're, and were willing to ship it. We probably could have done, but we didn't. My principles for this uh, are a bit different. I want to go back to really the essence of what Hammer was good at, challenge all of those assumptions for the modern 2025 version of the web and the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript specs. So, for example, um, I don't believe that... I, I'm not going to start adding in all the different um, uh, template languages and things like that until there's a really strong case for it. So old Hammer supported Slim and Hamel templating languages instead of just writing raw HTML with Hammer tags. Um, uh, SAS and Less and, and, uh, <laughs> and CoffeeScript, remember CoffeeScript instead of just writing vanilla JavaScript. Um, these are all things that the old Hammer supported and you know, I, I don't want to make any assumptions. I know for a fact many people don't use those technologies, you know, anymore. So I'm not going to just put them in uh, just because we had them in the whole older Hammer app. I do think there is a place for templating HTML, um, but I haven't really f gathered my my thoughts or opinions on what that should be uh, or what the answer to that is just yet. Yeah, so until that time, we're going to stick with um, HTML and hammer tags and then and then see what people do with that and see what people need okay enough of the backstory enough of the narrative i just want to show you now at this point where i'm at with it so um i'm running here you've had it up on the screen while my face has been talking for a while we got the hammer app let's just run through a flow uh i'm gonna add a new project hammer demo and as you can see 
that project's now been created. I've got a few options for how I can get started. I could go to my uh, finder and drag a, a directory of a site that I've already got into, into this uh, panel here. This is the sites list. And then uh, templates. So one of the big things I wanted to do was bring templates natively into, um, into Hammer rather than pushing your way to a website to download a zip, to unpack the zip on your desktop and then put it into Hammer as the old Hammer app did. I want to make that more streamlined flow. So I've got a couple of example templates just here. Let's go ahead and um, we will um, we'll grab one of these. I'll choose where I want to put it on my local system. Press open. And as you can see, that has now done a couple of things. It's created a site in Hammer called Blog Starter. It was based on the Blog Starter template. Uh, so if I select that now. Uh, and then in the detail view, you can see that it uh, has access to the blog starter directory and it's processed its first build, completed the build very quickly. It's a small site, um, but actually one of the big benefits of the new hammer with everything written in, in Swift is this super fast. And especially after I added uh, caching and a whole uh, caching system, builds are super, super fast. So performance is going to be really key for, for the new hammer. Uh, you can see here, as I flick through, we've got the the um, files list with filtered uh, views like we had in the old hammer. Um, I'm going to come back to to-dos in a second. Um, we've also got the the log. So this is actually telling us quite uh, in, in a quite a verbose way what the actual build engine is doing, um, as well as highlighting any any errors. And obviously this is still had some bugs and it's just very much a work in progress. Um, so I'll gloss over uh, many of those for, for now. Um, as I said, it's got a cache. You can force rebuild without the cache. Um, but let's go ahead and actually open up this project that we just created. So I'm going to open it up in my text editor here. This is my um, uh, I, now I'm using sublime text simply because and um, I'll just show you we do support um, any of your text editing applications. So I, I use cursor a lot and we're going to do a whole nother series of videos about the relationship between AI assistive ag agentic um, IDEs and hammer in the future. Um, but for this demo, I'm going to keep it really simple and a little bit old school just by using sublime. You can see just like old hammer, I have access to the, um, the to the um, source directory and then the build output directory and we're calculating the size. Uh, we've got some site settings at the moment. There's a couple of things that we can do here. Uh, I'm just going to show you why I can enable or disable caching at the site level and I can also pick um, a forge destination to deploy my site to. So let's go ahead and grab uh, this one from my forge account. I'm going to save it. And so now when I publish to Forge, you can see it's got this as the, as the destination. And so I've built this, I publish, and it's successfully published. So this site is now live on the internet, published to this uh, Forge site. So that workflow is extremely streamlined. If I don't want to publish it to Forge right now, uh, I can also export the build, the build folder, from Hammer to wherever I want and export that as a zip archive. Okay, let's just do uh, one more thing. In fact, uh, yeah, let's do one more thing and just show you a little bit about actually what's going on in the site that was created from the template. So you can see in my blog starter project, I've got an index.html file and it has all of these strange looking HTML comments. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee and continue. So. Um, we've got variables, so these are hammer variable tags, so we're able to set and assign uh, a value, my blog, to uh, a variable called title, and uh, and then we and then we can use that. So, for example, I'm using that uh, title variable here in the title uh, field of my head in my HTML. Um, let's say, uh, in fact, we're not using a hammer tag that we could here. Um, I'm going to use the at style sheet tag and put styles.css just here. Now I'm going to hit command S to save. Hammer is going to 
rebuild, which it has done. And so now when I come into the build folder, so this is the output that Hammer generates inside the parent project and go into the index.html, you can see that that tag has been replaced with the, the link tag and the path to my, uh, to my style sheet. All right. Uh, you can also see then if we compare these two, we've got some includes as well. So uh, this recent post HTML include and the footer. And if I come into the build, you can see that that's injected, uh, that's injected the recent posts and it's injected the footer as we would hope and expect. So I've built, you know, the uh, HTML parser. I'm working on the CSS parser at the moment, and I'll progressively add, you know, the JavaScript parser and all the other features. Um, you know, incrementally as we go. But this is where I need your help. I want testers, I want feedback, I want front end developers to tell me what their vision would be. And I will take that vision on board and, and figure out how I feel about it and see what, what we think goes into, into Hammer. But as you can see, it's very, very real, very, very functional. And it looks kind of swish for a 2025 native Mac app version of Hammer for Mac. So what do you think? Let me know. Uh, if you want to give it a try, please get involved in the comments and um, let's get Hammer back in, in the hands of all of the developers that love and have missed it. Bye for now.